Welcome back to Daily Reviews. You may remember uh, last year I did a video regarding the 1080 Ti, whether it was still relevant in 2020. Um, so now I've uh, been really lucky and managed to get myself a 3080 Founders Edition. So I thought I'd take you guys along for the ride and check out just how much improve performance has improved over the last two generations. <music> So this is going to be a really short video and this is the 1080 Ti in question that I tested before. This is the Aorus uh, non-extreme from Gigabyte. Uh, I've had this card since brand new and cost around £700. So similar sort of price to the 3080 which cost me 650 So we're going to take a look at uh, just, just a few graphs. It's going to be a really quick video uh, and basically show you how much performance has improved over the last two generations. So let's have a quick look. Now the first game I ran which was Hitman, uh, the the original remake Hitman, um, I believe uses DirectX 11, um, so it gives a bit of a, a broad, more broad scale of games to test as I've got some DirectX 12 titles in there as well. Um, so as you can see by the graph, the 1080 Ti uh, over 1080p got 149 frames average and over 1440p got 124 frames average. And then as you can see uh, from the RTX 3080, we went, went up to 168 average on 1080p, um, which was probably a little bit bottlenecked because it's trying to push so many frames, so it's not a massive improvement in terms of 1080p. But then again, this card isn't for 1080p. Uh, and then we go to 1440p and we've got quite a big improvement, almost 40 frames extra, so it's a big improvement there. Um, so as you can see, it scales a bit better at the higher resolutions. Um, 4K does scale even better, so you get a much bigger improvement over 4K from what I've seen from other people's videos. Um, however, I don't have a 4K monitor, so I'm not able to test that. Then we went on to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is a game I use for most of my tests, um, and a lot of people do, to be fair. Um, these are all at highest settings, and uh, we tested it to see what we got out of this. Uh, excuse any noise from the dog. Um, so at 1080p for the 1080p, we've got 124 frames average, and we've got 85 frames average on the, at 1440p. And then if you see the massive improvement now on the RTX 38, it's a DirectX 12 title, uh, 185 average frames over 1080p and probably would have got more I don't know if it, if CPU didn't bottleneck at all because obviously we're running a bit CPU limited there um, and then 152 frames on 1440p next we did Metro Exodus and we got a average of 72 at 1080p on the 1080 Ti and only 59 on 1440p. This is quite a difficult game to run. Again, all at ultra settings um, and using benchmarks as benchmarks built in. Uh, on the 3080, we got 119 frames average. So again, a massive, massive improvement there. Almost 50 frames uh, improvement at 1080p, and then 98 at 1440p. Again, almost. 40 frames better off from the third, uh, RTX 3080. We then ran Far Cry New Dawn. Again, it seems to be one that's quite a, a hard game to run. Um, so at 1080 Ti, at 1080p, got 118 frames average, and at 1440p, 101. And then, as we can see from the RTX 38, you've got 138, so only 20 frames more than the 1080 Ti. And at 1440p, it was almost similar to the 1080p results, you've got 133. Um, so you can start to see a bit of a bottleneck from the CPU there. Even though this is a 5900X, um, there's something not quite right there. Then to finish it all off, I did some... Um, Synthetic tests. Uh, I ran my standard Unigen Superposition and Time Spy. So let's talk about the Unigen Superposition results. Uh, we got a score of 5,748 at 1080p Extreme on the 1080 Ti, and then 3,131 at 1440p Extreme. Um, obviously, that's a custom run because it isn't. It's not a preset for that, but I just set it up to Extreme. And then, as you can see, absolutely huge difference to the RTX 3080. This really shows off how much the RTX 3080 has improved over two generations over the 1080 Ti. And we get pretty much double the score. So we get 10,851 at 1080p Extreme, which is, by the way, an absolutely hell of a test to run. Uh, and 
at 1440p again we get over double um, 1440p we get 6636 score on that which again a massive massive increase in performance and then we go to the last one which I used uh, default settings at 1080p and 1440p whatever 3 d Mark decides to set as whatever the, their default settings are uh, and again we see a massive improvement here uh, so 1080 Ti 1080p uh, was 14,750 this is graphics score only and at 1440 it was 9801 and then we go into uh, the 3080 which got a massive 25478 so over 10000 more points than the 1080 Ti which again shows just how much things have improved over the two generations uh, and then we go to the 1440p uh, for the 3080 we get 17000 again almost double there um so an absolutely fantastic result and shows just how much things have improved over the time. So there we have it. As you can see, over the past two generations, Nvidia have really stepped up. And uh, there wasn't as much a step up to the 20 series. I never had one of those cards, but from what I saw, there wasn't as big a jump. Uh, but since we've gone to Ampere or Ampere, however you want to pronounce it, we've now got an absolutely incredible performance uplift. Um, again, it does vary in games, so it depends what games you're playing, um, depending on the results you'll get. Um, some things. Uh, this is definitely not for 1080p, because as you can see things start to get a bottleneck even by 5900x um, which is clocked at all, all core of 4.6 which is pretty good um, so yeah so the the, the, the the performance improvements are absolutely huge over the next over the past two generations um, so this card is more for your 1440p and definitely for 4k because it scales even better at 4k and you start to see an even bigger uh, improvement in the performance between last generation and the generation before in terms of 4k now in this didn't use any right ray tracing because 1080 ti can't do it um didn't use dlss again because of 1080 ti can't do it so this is raw stock performance the only thing i did change but i did it on both cards was up the power limit um to the maximum they could go and i think on the 38 it was 115 percent um so i just let it let it do what it did um and it is obviously stock cooler because it is the fans edition um so yeah so i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope you give me a bit of information if you are coming from uh, a 10 series gpu which i believe a lot of people will be a lot a lot of people seem to skip the 20 series um, mainly because of price and things like that and performance upload wasn't really there for the extra price you were paying um so uh, like i said i hope you enjoyed this i hope it gives you an idea of what sort of performance you're going to get from skipping a generation and going to the 30 series when you can get one um, unfortunately things are still really bad in that uh, aspect um, and hopefully they'll improve soon but it's not looking very good at the moment and um, so i hope you guys can manage to get hold of one when 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 they come into stock uh, fingers crossed for you uh, i hope you enjoyed the video uh, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel give this video a thumbs up and leave any comments in the comment section below give it a thumbs down if you didn't like it i don't mind um and uh, let me know what you think and i'll see you guys in the next video cheers